The title of the article I'm sharing with you today is I'm 40 years old and just had an affair. What kind of mistress is the most terrifying? Let's listen together. A few years ago, a man candidly told me he was having an affair. He thought that as an emotional writer, I would be neutral about relationships and wouldn't react angrily like other women upon hearing about a man cheating and calling him a jerk. Indeed, regarding extramarital affairs, my interest lies much more in understanding the genuine psychology of both men and women rather than in scolding men and mistresses. Furthermore, I don't consider myself a moralistic purist because morality is one thing and human nature is another. He told me that he met his wife through a matchmaker. At the time, he wasn't young and his parents were pressuring him. They thought the conditions were suitable, so they got married. Isn't that how everyone lives? A year after the marriage, life wasn't particularly sweet, but it was peaceful. They quickly had a child, but he always felt something was missing, making life somewhat dull. Later, a new employee joined his company, and he finally realized what was missing. A passionate love that could ignite his spirit, unlike his current life, which seemed to stretch out predictably. At this point, two significant changes occurred in his life. First, after giving birth, his wife's temper worsened. She was either nitpicking or criticizing him, making him feel unwelcome at home. She also became very anxious, feeling that having a child brought heavy future responsibilities, like saving for education and planning for the child's future marriage and home. However, he felt it was unnecessary to worry so much since the child was still young. His wife scolded him for lacking family responsibility and thinking only of himself, accusing him of not caring about her and their child, claiming she married the wrong person. As a result, he preferred to stay at the office under the pretext of working overtime. Coincidentally, the girl he liked at the office also had feelings for him. They began to interact frequently under the guise of working late and eventually got together. He sincerely told me a lot, saying, I can only tell you this. I truly believe my lover outshines my wife in every way she is gentle, considerate, and understanding. My wife is just a middle-aged woman full of resentment. I really don't want to face her at all. I told him that many middle-aged men feel this way, finding their wives nagging and unlovable. However, you have to think about it, you aren't good to your wife either. You disdain her and find her annoying, so she treats you the same way. You say your lover is gentle and considerate, I bet you are very attentive to her too, so she is just reciprocating your behavior. If you treated your lover harshly, I believe she wouldn't be gentle anymore. If you treated your wife like you treat your lover, she might start dating you again. From my experience with many extramarital affairs, there are patterns. Right now, you and your lover are in a honeymoon phase. But see how things change in a couple of years if you can't divorce and marry her. She might be more destructive than your wife. He immediately denied it, saying it was impossible because his lover truly loved him and asked for nothing but to be with him. This made him feel even more compassionate and guilty. Apart from marriage, he tried to fulfill her other needs as much as possible. I smiled and said, time is the only tool that tests all feelings. After our last conversation, his lover hinted that he should divorce and marry her, willing to accept his child and promising to be good to him. He was deeply moved by this, thinking it must be deep love for a woman to volunteer to be a stepmother. He indeed considered divorce, feeling that life was short and he should be with someone he liked. He began to visit his parents frequently, hinting at his unhappiness and preparing them for the news. Then he tentatively suggested to his parents that he wanted a divorce. They were furious, telling him to drop the idea immediately, vowing they would die if he divorced. He was scared and didn't dare take the risk, so he abandoned the idea of divorce. However, his lover was unhappy, thinking he was deliberately stalling. They frequently argued, and over time he felt exhausted. He started to see that his lover wasn't that great. 
and his wife wasn't that bad. His desire for divorce genuinely weakened. He couldn't break up with his lover, nor could he leave his wife, feeling trapped and desperate. Seeing my updates on social media reminded him of me. He admitted that he now realized his lover didn't truly love him and had been deceiving him all along. I said, you didn't love her that much either. You weren't entirely honest with her. You both were the same he asked if there was a perfect solution. It wasn't that I didn't want to help, but given the current situation, a perfect solution was nearly impossible unless he had a lot of money to satisfy his lover, who would then leave or divorce and marry her, making her content. But he was obviously unwilling to do either. 99% of extramarital affairs end in a mess. Men find that their once docile lovers become unbearably demanding and coercive. Women feel that the once gentle married men become selfish and indifferent. Both parties feel deceived, but it might not necessarily be the case. Many people overlook that the other party's changes might be triggered by their own changes. Men think their wives have become harsh and domineering, but they haven't been attentive and caring as they used to be. Women think their husbands have become irritable and cold, but they haven't been as gentle and charming as before. Married men find their mistresses becoming greedy and practical because their love has dwindled. Mistresses think their men are no longer as devoted because they are no longer as selfless as before. The eternal truth in relationships is that most people feel wronged, thinking the other person has turned into someone they dislike, yet they never see how they've wronged others or how they've become the person the other dislikes first. That's the end of today's article. Wrong ones part ways, right ones find their way. Thanks for listening so far. This channel is for everyone to improve better daily. If any of the words or sentences are helpful, then both my team and I will be very happy. Subscribing and following will help keep us moving forward. Let's get back to sharing. Here, you will never be alone.